Assalamu alaikum. In this mini lecture series, we will be learning uh, more about medical research. These lectures are meant uh, for general audience in a medical field. I want to target med students, I want to target the interns and the junior residents. But anyone is really able to learn at least the process of this if you have a, a zero or a minimal knowledge uh, about research methodology and uh, all related topics. I know you guys have to come up with researches at least one during your application for the residency. It may not be a good idea to do this process during your internship, so I prefer to start learning all about research earlier in your medical school, at maybe third or fourth year. At least you can come up with one or two uh, projects. You will be able at least to publish one of them, and you can really have your time to uh, enjoy the learning. You get your time to in depth go through the uh, research methodology and related topics. Uh, although it is never too late to learn about research, so from this lecture series, I will give you a, an introduction. I will give you something that can help you to build up more knowledge afterward. You didn't expect yourself to really come up with the best knowledge ever, but at least I can give you some clues of where to start, how to start, how to choose an article, how to really formulate your final uh, project into a written uh, manuscript. Um, and I wish and I hope this will be helpful for you guys. So let's start. So here we go. Let's start with the first step in uh, research. This is a very important step. This is formulating a research question. You cannot start vague, non-specific. You don't know where to go. You have to start with formulating a research question. In this lecture, we will really go through how to choose your question, how to formulate it, and hopefully how to come up with the best question ever. Again, we all know why research is uh, important in medicine because the value of research in uh, improving knowledge, improving patient's care, improving um, all the aspects of medicine and medical knowledge, uh, investigation, diagnosis, management, all these things. Uh, and eventually, again, this will help to improve patient's care. And uh, for those who are interested in academia and research, this will really help you to build up your career. This will take you to a next level. So it is important through different aspects. So how to formulate your research question? Usually you would start with a broad topic. Broad topic means an area of medicine here, for example, that is um, usually uh, area of your interest. And this is something that is practical and this is something uh, worth investigating. You know, um, research is expensive, so people will ask for funds to execute a good quality research. You can't really waste money, waste resources in something in uninteresting. Nobody will care about nothing practical and it isn't worth being investigated. To really come up with a good topic and a good research question afterward, you have to have a good knowledge of the topic you are interested in. It's not only something that I'm passionate about, that's it. No, you really have to have good knowledge about it. In terms of you have read from books, you have come across a few journals, and you are, there are other resources that you have used. So you are ready to go in depth through the research. When you formulate your question, you should be as specific as you can. And in fact, you should go very specific. Once you have done some pre-reading of that around the topic, you really know what hasn't been done before, so you won't uh, repeat it. You know what has not been done, so you can have your chance to dig into and to consider as your research. No one will do a general, vague, non-specific topics. It is waste. Let your interests drive you. That's why you should really do something that you like, something you like, something that you have a knowledge in. You start with an open-ended question, something like why, how, rather than simple yes or no type of questions. You need to be clear. You can come up with more than one question, that's fine, but then you can pick your best that you think fits your circumstances. Your question needs to be complex. It can't be just a simple, a straightforward thing. I mean, this is a specific part of the broad topic, but then this is also like a complex aspect of the topic itself. I'll give you more examples to really have a good understanding what do I mean by a complex question. What is a good question? What is a bad question? Uh, of course, an interesting problem to you and probably to others is a good idea. You will come up with a good question. A new problem is probably better than challenging uh, an existing idea or an issue. Uh, 
something that is researchable, something that is practical, is way better than doing something hard to do. You need to do something that is measurable. That your problem you are interested in is something measurable. You can come up with feasible data that you can collect, analyze, and interpret later on. A focused question is better than uh, too narrow or too broad. So you have to think of how and why type of questions. You should be focused. You should be as clear as you can and in a complex way, more or less. Um, this is something that can help you to really uh, like uh, draw your blueprint of what to do and what to expect. This is the Pico formula. Um, there are some few variations of uh, the same thing, but I found Pico to be easy, um, uh, helpful, and yet practical. So this will deal with the population, uh, patients or, or problem, uh, intervention versus exposure, comparison, and the outcome. So the population is the people that you are examining, um, what, who they are, what group of population you are uh, doing your research on. It's a population or patients, or what is a problem of interest. The intervention is what you are exposing the group to, such as a screening test, a new drug, or surgery, for example. And then you need to compare them to a comparison group. They were exposed to nothing, like a placebo, or standard therapy, or, for example, no surgery. And then you have your outcome that you are estimating or measuring. The outcome is either diagnosis, or the development of the disease, or, for example, the mortality. So PICO is easy. PICO is helpful to come up with even a better, uh, well-structured question. These are some other variation of the PICO that you may need to know about. Again, I found PICO to be easy, uh, straightforward, and helpful. So this is for the first part. The next lecture, we will go through some examples of how to formulate a good question through research ideas. Thank you very much.